So in the previous video, we talked about the ways that social media have changed the way we share information. And for the classroom, that means that students can now access the internet and also access material presented by the teacher and at large receive a lot of information about the material that they're trying to cover. And on the other side of this, it also changes the way the students can present that they actually know the information because students can now add to this environment and contribute to the social media of the Web 2.0 revolution as well. Alongside that social media revolution comes the idea of social networking or communication. Tools of the 21st century are changing the way that we converse and talk to each other, or in other words, enhancing those ways. Um, the same kind of students which have problems presenting in class and standing in front of everybody, and yes, that is an important skill that the kids need to develop, or at least try you know, to develop, but those same students don't have problems putting themselves out there in Twitter and Facebook. And Facebook and Twitter are two examples of social networking tools which have changed the way that we interact with the world. You know, um, Everybody now has profiles and status updates where we just broadcast what we're doing to the world and our thoughts, our intentions. When big news things happen in the media, Facebook and Twitter are the first ones to explode with information and comments and our opinions. Uh, it's the way that we share who we are and what we think about things. And um, it's all stored in the digital universe and forever there. And there are a lot of you know ethical repercussions of that. And but if you think about it, it's changing the way that we express ourselves both as individuals and as a society. In response to major events, you can go to Twitter and see what Twitter has been saying. And in Twitter, you can get a general picture of what the society is saying. Major news channels like CNN and NBC and Fox Network all have catching on the fact that Twittering is a way that people are expressing their thoughts. So why not do the same thing in the classroom? Why not open the avenues for kids to uh, express themselves in those ways? And we can talk about how we can do that in later on. For example, you can have something like the question of the day and you can post that on Twitter or on Facebook and have kids reply to that. Through Twitter, to Twitter and Facebook, kids can also have uh, portals or pages where, where um, they can connect to, to, each, uh, to other kids in the class and also to the teacher. And that way, um, information can be div divulged and expressed faster. Think about it this way. Sometimes one or two status updates will replace 30 phone calls or emails that you would have to send out. And people don't check those as often. And so one little status update can send the message out, guys, don't forget to study for tomorrow because there's going to be a test. And a lot of people will catch on to that. So imagine the advantage of communicating to the kids. And also kids can start talking to them to each other. And that's already happening. You know, when they have a project to do the next day, you can go to, the, to Facebook and you can see that all of them are posting things about their project and working together or networking in, in, to do that. Uh, how can we actually start inter using those interactions in a positive way? Um, you can start thinking about maybe hosting uh, pages for for your class or where kids can can go and network uh, and share information about the class the question of the thing thing I talked about kids can go for to set up study groups and help each other they can go, they can you can start discussions uh, in, in wall posts and things like that you can conduct quizzing and polls and all kinds of feedback uh, between students and, and other students and teacher and students and there is no reason to limit yourself uh, and be scared of that and I know there are ethical repercussions of using uh, social networking in the context of education. But like I said, as, if, as with anything else, the problem is not the technology. It is how the technology is being used and who is monitoring the use of that technology. I truly believe that as long as you maintain transparency, in other words, anything that happens in those websites is accessible to anyone to check to make sure that nothing bad is happening. Because yes, there are predators out there trying to take advantage of kids. And so if you, as long as you make sure that Anything that happens in these social networkings is transparent. There's no difference from the kind of things that would happen in real life. Yes, there are bullying, but there's also bullying in real life. Yes, there's, there's bad things happening, but there's also bad things happening in real life. There's, the bad things are not enough reason for me to, to, to close the door for the great things that could be done through those devices. Um, but those of you who are not comfortable with that, there are other tools out there that can be used for the same reasons. Things like forums or, or, or groups where you uh, basically set up an online community where, where kids can post uh, comments and hold discussions on a virtual environment. 
and I use that in my classroom um, in response to the flip videos. I also always require the kids to go to the forum and post comments. I've talked about that when I do actually describe the way I actually run my class. And I actually use Google Groups because Google Groups has a functionality that you can actually integrate email into the forum. So kids can access the forum either through email or through the actual website. So you don't necessarily need to go to the forum to post a reply. You can send a reply to the, to the news group and then everybody gets their reply through the through email server. So it's kind of like a, a listserv connected to a forum at the same time. Either one is a good way to do it. So forum, listservs, and Google Groups are just a few examples of how 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 to uh, connect kids in a virtual environment and, and then expand on, the, on those classroom discussions you've always wanted to have. You can also open the room for kids to post questions that they don't understand and have other kids reply to those questions. You can also post, have room for kids to initiate their own discussions about the topic and you know the possibilities are lim limitless. So forums, groups and listservs are yet another tool that you can use uh, in conjunction with things like Twitter and Facebook or social networking websites. Another example of great networking communication use of Web 2.02s is the use of actual texting and uh, instant feedback polling mechanisms that are available on the web. One of my favorites is something called Sally. Now, Sally is something you can use either through cell phone or online, and then you basically go into the website and set up a cell, and then anybody that's connected to the cell will automatically receive anything that's sent to the cell. Now, you can actually set up uh, cur curator settings. In other words, you don't necessarily get everything that's, for example, let's say I send something to the cell, everybody in the cell gets it. I can set up a roadblock that where I have to verify that that message is okay before it goes out to everybody. Or I can have a free open cell where people send a message to the cell and everybody that's in the cell receives a message as well. And you can, that can be done either through text messaging, emailing, or through the website itself. But either way, it's almost like having a chat through texting. And you can imagine how you can do, uh, use that in, in the context of a classroom to, uh, to, to uh, enhance discussion. Uh, uh, one thing that I do, for example, is a fishbowl design where you would have a group of kids having a discussion and then another group of kids sitting on the outside of the discussion discussing the discussion, you know, or criticizing the discussion or talking about the debate. But those kids can't be talking because they're going to be interfering with the discussion. So you can have a chat room on the other, on the outside, basically talking about that. And, it, and that can be done through an actual chat room, which we'll talk about in a second, or you can do it through a to texting, you know, something to, that's Sally. Sally can also be used in other applications. For example, you can put a question of the day on the board, and then everybody sends their replies to that, and then Sally will pull that in and show on the website uh, how many people thought that question A was the answer, how many people thought the answer B was the answer, and so forth. So you can use this to pull, or as a bell ringer, or an exit ticket out of the classroom. And, and it, so Sally has a lot of functionalities which are really great. It allows you to poll your students, quiz your students, have instant feedback, and also hold discussion groups online and through text messaging or through email. Uh, a variation of that is something that's called Poll Everywhere, and it's basically the same idea where you will post a question, and then kids will have the opportunity to send a text message uh, to a certain number and then reply to that question and get feedback, instant feedback to the teacher. And then the feedback actually can be popped up on the screen and you can see uh, instantly uh, the results pulling in. Or you can hold those results until the, the poll is over and then broadcast the results and to show people what they thought. And so this is another way to do instant polling, instant feedback, quizzing in the classroom, bell ringers and things like that. Um, but I like Sally even better because it has that functionality. In addition to that, it also has the functionality of having a discussion through the cell uh, as well. So I really like that. Um, and also there's another one that's called Answer Garden. That one does not involve text messaging, but it's an online website where you post a question and then you open the for the kids to answer it, and then the answers get pulled as well. So it's, it's just an online, but it's a great way to get feedback. And if the students have smartphones, they can connect to the website and use it that way. So these are some great tools that you can use. Another great tool that I am willing to use in a classroom, and I gave you an example when I was talking about the fishbowl uh, discussion method, but you can also use this in other applications. For example, having uh, online discussions outside of the classroom, study groups, um, review groups. I use this with my, I'm, I'm planning to use this with my AP biology class to study right before the AP test and hold review sessions even when we're not in school. Uh, 
well, you can use that. You can use Uvo or Skype or either other chat rooms on the web on online. And basically, these are things that allow kids to connect into a chat room environment. Uvo even has multiple video feeds that you can interlink, and so everybody can see themselves each other. Skype can do something similar to a certain extent, and you can also have chat rooms. But either way, these things will allow you to connect to students and you hold online sessions, even with you not in the classroom. So. Uh, a lot of virtual schools are starting to use tools like this, but I see no reason why we can integrate uh, possibly things like that as well, as long as, again, there's transparency and every message that's being made has a record that can be uh, verified to make sure nobody is abusing that, all right, and that nothing wrong is happening with that. And so also remember that kids are texting, and yes, a lot of prohibition has happened in the classroom because people are afraid of of kids using texting and doing bad things, cyberbullying, meeting up on, in school, setting up secret meetings, and talking to kids from other classes, and losing cut. But again, like I said, I, that's a problem of management, not so much a problem of the technology itself. You can use the technology in good ways. Kids are IMing, instant messaging, and video chatting more often now that they are sending emails or talking on the phone. So phones and emails are actually archaic for kids. Kids have spent more time in IMing and texting than anything else. We can bring that into the classroom and I gave you some examples already in this video of how you can use texting to establish cells of, of discussion and discussion groups or polling or quizzing or exit tickets, instant feedback in the classroom and a lot of other things like that. And you can do the same thing to instant messaging to things like Skype, Uvo, and chatting when you can actually set up discussion groups and study groups either within, between students or between a teacher and students. And so uh, don't be afraid of opening the doors for this technology to enhance your classroom. Uh, another thing that also has to do with uh, social networking communication is the idea of blogging. Now, blogging is when students get do a little bigger. Now, not like think of a status update to the to the second degree. And I started talking about that in the previous post when I talked about kids producing their own content. Here's another example where kids can actually manifest their thoughts and their opinions about the subject by blogging. And this is yet another way that you can create discussion because one kid can post a blog and then you can make other kids go to the blog and post comments and review the blog and criticize the blog. And so instead of posting a, a uh, um, just a report for a lab report, for example. You can have the kid blog the lab report and then have other kids criticize or do peer review on their lab, on their report uh, in the, in, within the blogosphere. But the cool thing about this is that you end up building a portfolio of what the kid did in class through the blog that the kid created. And you can do wiki spaces or, or, or blogs. There are a lot of websites like that. And you can use that to enhance the delivery of information and the kids actually feel cool about being involved in technology as a way to, to do an assignment and demonstrate their learning. And at the same time, what they do with that is that they have the opportunity to share that in a permanent way that it's out there in the web and it makes them feel more special about the work they've done. And so keep an open mind about using social networking things like Twitter and Facebook, uh, forums, groups, listservs, um, texting with things like Sally, Poll Everywhere, and also Answer Garden, Skype, Oval, and chat rooms, uh, even texting and instant messaging, all blogging. All of these things can be used to enhance the classroom with things like posting questions of the day, communications that are sent, uh, mass communication sent, that's being sent out, discussions, either online or live, fishbowl style discussions. Um, students an environment for students to post questions and help themselves or create even more discussion. Uh, study groups, polling, quizzing, instant feedback, exit tickets, entrance tickets. All of this can be used by layering these levels of networking and communication in your classroom. And this is just the beginning of what we can start to doing. And so there's a lot of ways in which you can incorporate the communication aspect of the Web 2.0 into your classroom. Think about it. Talk about it. Blog about it. Start using it.